You ever know something but have no idea how or why you know it? Yeah, that was me with this bug. And I'm about to do something I've never done before. I'm finna show y'all my search history. For some reason I remembered it as a carrot hit, but it's actually a cat's hit, and it's also known as a bush cricket. Hey, Editor Casual here. It's come to my attention that I completely butchered that word. Turns out it's Katie did, as in did Katie do it? Yes, Katie did. I'm gonna mispronounce it a few more times in this video, but just know that I'm aware of it. You don't have to comment on it, you don't have to acknowledge it, we can just continue watching the video and act like it never happened. Alright, back to the video. They're also known as longhorned grasshoppers, but at a family reunion, they'd sit closer to the cricket table. Also, they're perfectly harmless, they can't really hurt you. Not physically, anyway. Also, I'm like 90% sure the sound was edited there. Then again, there's more than 6,000 species of them. So maybe one of them does sound like what the UK thinks recess in America is. That UK trend becomes more of a violation every time I see it. Also, a lot of y'all wanted to know where they're found. Like I said, there's more than 6,000 flavors of this thing. But for the most part, you'll find them in Central, Southeast Asia, Australia, and parts of Europe and Africa. Not to mention the 255 flavors of nonsense found in America. But the giant cats it did? That is a Malaysian issue. Most eat leaves and flowers, the larger ones will eat other insects and snails, but the biggest violations will murk lizards and small snakes. If you're afraid of bugs, I'm legally obligated to tell you to scroll. It's the only warning you're gonna get. That is an armored bush cricket. They're omnivores, meaning they'll eat anything with or without a pulse. They've been known to climb into bird's nests while the parents are away and attempt to delete the chicks while they're too young to even realize what's happening. And when pressed, the bush cricket will projectile launch its own toxic blood right into the eyes of the enemy. And as a last resort, the satanic cockroach will vomit and evacuate the contents of its stomach. Nothing that small enough is safe, not even each other. Because whenever they shoot their own blood in self-defense, they immediately start cleaning themselves. But not because they're like neat freaks or anything. It's because if they don't, the smell of fresh blood will attract other bush crickets, and if resources are low, they will eat that one cricket alive. Friendly fire on steroids. Also, they're not actually crickets. They're a subfamily of the Katie did, which is apparently how you pronounce it. Not only was I wrong, but I said it wrong confidently. That's the worst kind. You probably already know where they're found. Yup, Australia. Yeah, no, wait, it's, it's Africa this time. Specifically Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. The more you know. Although sometimes I wish I didn't. This frog has a name that might just get this video taken down. That, and you can google this if you don't believe me, is a Titicaca frog. Found in a South American lake of the same name. And yeah, that's its actual skin. It looks like the end game of a back alley BBL, but there's a good reason for that. Because the lake they're found in is about 12,500 feet in the mountains, making it the highest lake in the world. That's about 3,810 meters, or more than 2 miles in the air. Meaning Travis Scott's the second highest in the room. But it also means there's only a third of the oxygen you'd get at sea level, making it harder to breathe in and out of water. But the Chi Chi Frog can take in oxygen through its skin, and having loose baggy Bosch BBL skin means it maximizes its surface area and the amount of oxygen it can pull. But it's also why if you google scrotum frog, you get this lipo Kermit's picture. You hear that? That's the sound of guidelines coming for me. What's this? Yeah, it's real. It's called a potu bird and it's found in Central and South America. Now question, which looks more like a rough draft? The potu or its muppet in the face cousin the frog mouth? Whatever the answer is, it's not by much. The potu's insecticide with wings that mostly eats bugs and beetles. They're nocturnal, meaning this flying acid trip tweet is only active in the dark like all paralysis demons. During the day, they camouflage by cosplaying as a tree stump. Both of these pictures has a bird in it. Now here's the real thing with these birds. Podus have giant eyes that can capture even the faintest light as they go grocery shopping in the dark. But their eyelids also have tiny slits that help them sense movement. Which is why this perked out pigeon can actually see you with its eyes closed. And even though I said they eat mostly bugs, some have been found with small birds caged in their stomach. But that's not the weirdest thing about them. Cause I didn't show you what they sound like. On a wholesome note, the Podus monogamous and often mate for life. And if this crack canary can find love, there's hope for the rest of us. The more you know. Don't worry, you're not on the wrong side of TikTok. Welcome to Animal Logic, and I can explain. That terrifying pit of nightmare material is actually a camel's mouth. Those little bumps are called papillae. They're the same ones you have on your tongue, except these are big enough to put a therapist on Forbes. Those flesh teeth help the camel snack on cacti, thorns and all, without even flinching. Camels might be tough enough to get in the salty spittoon, but they're not the only ones you should avoid looking in the mouth. This horrific image is actually the mouth of a leatherback sea turtle. Those papillae are basically a child lock for jellyfish, which helps keep it in place as the turtle filters out seawater. Same idea, different nightmare. Penguins don't chew their food, instead they swallow the entire thing whole. And like with turtles, penguin papillae make sure the only direction the fish go in is down the throat. It's like an escalator of death for fish. Papillae is why you wouldn't want this cat to lick you. Lion tongues are spiny and as rough as sandpaper, helping them literally lick the meat off bones and brush their fur without actually owning a brush. But taking a lick from a lion might leave you with less skin than you started with. How many to get to the center? You better hope you never find out. Where's that young black man with all the animal facts? Right here, hey, how you doing? I can actually explain that. So 
So a lot of birds can do this thing where they can stabilize their heads, basically lock it in place while moving. Which means birds can focus on a target without losing sight of whatever they're looking at. Yeah, it's aimbot. The best way I can explain is like this. Take your phone and do the selfie pose, and while looking at the screen, turn your head from side to side. You're able to focus on your phone even with your head moving, that's called gaze stabilization. Difference is, birds are able to do the same exact thing, but by holding their head still thanks to muscles and neck vertebrae. Also, this bird is an American kestrel, and it's the smallest type of falcon. And kestrels catch bodies by flying overhead and then swooping down like a fighter jet to murk their prey. Being able to stabilize their head means even though they can snatch souls fast enough to get a ticket for it, they never lose vision of their prey. Also, kestrels are able to use wind to kind of hover in place like hummingbirds, which is what you're seeing in this video. Also, some falcons can hit speeds of 240 miles per hour, and since their brains are designed to process information that fast, when they're not moving, they basically see the world in slow motion. The more you know. Here's a little mind blower for you. Did you know possums and opossums are two very different animals? That is a possum, specifically a brush tail possum. They're famous for breaking into places they honestly have no business in the first place. This possum broke into a bakery and nearly OD'd on pastries. That's what you call defiant regret. He'll 100% do it again. That is an opossum. And before y'all get on me, some people say the O is silent, others don't. Animal Planet pronounced the O, so I do too. And the difference is opossums are the only marsupials found in America, while plain possums are seasoned throughout Australia, New Guinea, and New Zealand. And while they're both marsupials, the no opossums are more related to the marsupials of Down Under, like kangaroos. Also, the American opossum is much more introverted than the Aussie edition, since the American edition will go into an anxiety coma when stressed, while the Australian flavor is much more likely to throw hands and or bite. Possums eat thousands of ticks a year, making America a much less diseased place, while plain possums do things like break into offices, trash the place, and give us memes like this. I'd say it's about equal. I dare you to talk about the most wholesome animal you know. Hold on, let me see if I can find something real quick. That, that is the most wholesome animal on the planet. Manatees are plus size vegans that can pack thousands of pounds. But because their teeth are way in the back of their mouth, manatees are physically incapable of any form of violence. There's never been a recorded case of manatees attacking other animals or people. In fact, alligators, a literal prehistoric snare trap, will give manatees the right of way if they swim near each other. This one took it a step further by using one as a pool tube. But since manatees are allergic to any kind of conflict, he let it slide. The manatee's closest relative is the elephant and also aardvarks in the hyrax. And since manatees used to live on land, they still have fingernails. In fact, they have full-on hands. And now you see how the mermaid thing started. Manatees are so chill that the only reason it's illegal to touch one isn't to protect people from it, but to protect it from people. Since they're naturally curious and friendly towards people, they're literally too unproblematic for their own good. God bless this water blimp. This might be the greatest thing I've ever seen. So I learned something last week, and I desperately need y'all to see this, because I promise you you're not ready for what's behind me right now. That is a dwarf adult elephant. It was discovered in Sri Lanka in 2013, and it's the first recorded case of dwarfism in the wild. This Asian male elephant is just over 5 feet tall. I don't think y'all understand. I can look this elephant in the eye. That's, that's not even the best part. When they found him, he was squaring up with a male that was actually normal size. And the thing is, it was the mini-me that was the aggressor. This travel-sized elephant was picking a fight with someone literally twice his size. And winning. Like, this elephant probably wasn't even tall enough to reach his mom's nips as a kid, yet he's out here like a barber handing out fades. They ended up finding him a year later, but with what looked like gunshot wounds. Which sucks, and it's why humans are the Earth's acne, but this elephant built like a corgi took shells like 50 and kept it pushing. If that doesn't motivate you, nothing will. I didn't know what I wanted out of life before, but now all I want is to see my man's win. Since April's Down Syndrome Awareness Month, I want y'all to meet Kanako. Editor Casual here for hopefully the last time. Yeah, that was a mistake. April's actually Autism Awareness Month. Down Syndrome Awareness Month is in October. So, yeah, back to the video. Now, she might look like just another chimp, but she was actually born with the chimpanzee version of Down Syndrome. The difference is chimpanzees have 48 chromosomes while we have 46. So instead of having an extra 21st chromosome, Kanako had an extra 22nd. And it's the second recorded case of a chimp having this condition. The first one became a was before it turned two. Kanako didn't have it much easier. She suffered from colds, fevers, and diarrhea early on. Her growth was stunted and she had underdeveloped teeth. Kanako even developed cataracts in her eyes and was completely blind by the age of 7. And on top of that, during a physical, doctors discovered she had a congenital heart disease that meant she had a hole in her heart. Kanako's own mother abandoned her and because she was blind, it would never be safe to have her around other chimps because she could get targeted out of aggression. Basically, she had every reason to die. But, she was hand raised by human caretakers in a sanctuary in Japan where she was pretty much adopted as everyone's baby. They kept her as healthy and as happy as possible despite her condition. She even made a friend. They recruited Roman, an older female. Now, Roman was seen as the mom of the group, and whenever the other chimps would fight, she would usually be the one to intervene and break it up. So once a month, Roman and Kanako would go on supervised playdates. 
And even though Roman could clearly tell Kanako wasn't like the other chimps, they seemed to enjoy being around each other. Now sadly, this story does end with Kanako passing in her sleep in February of 2020. But she lived to 27, where the only other chimp with her condition tapped out before 2. But thanks to those researchers and Roman, she got to have a life worth living.